Hello, I'm Lee Mack and I was in the BBC New Comedy Awards in 1995. I didn't win, I was robbed. You have to be reasonably unhinged, I would say. There has to be something not quite right about you. Now that could be, you could be emotionally insecure, you could, uh, you could have been brought up in the woods. There's a million ways of doing it, but it, funny enough, I thought it was the opposite. When I started watching comedy, I used to think that these people had to be really level-headed, sort of sensible, very wise people, very grounded, otherwise they wouldn't be able to stand up in front of the audience because you couldn't have any insecurities if you stand in front of an audience, surely. But how wrong I was. And also the boring answer is that you have to be quite work quite hard early on because you've got to keep writing and the writing side of things is like an office job. You've got to get used to just sitting there all day writing material. I broke into stand-up by going to my local comedy club and watching a thing called The Gong Show which was in the middle of all the professionals, people from the audience were allowed to get up and have a go and if you were no good you got gonged off stage by a gimp a man in a gimp costume and I lasted about 30 seconds and the gimp gonged me off and I used to take around a suitcase full of fish in the early days and crabs and lobster for a joke, a, a, a visual joke, I used to take these things out of the suitcase but because I kept getting gonged off stage I never got to it so I would turn up at a gig with a suit full of, suitcase full of fish and then never get to that joke for about the first five or six gigs and uh, it started to stink after a while because I was, I was a student and couldn't afford to keep buying, you know, crabs are expensive. Couldn't afford a new crab every time I went to a gig or a new salmon or whatever. So I bought it once and that was it till it stunk. I don't think I ever got it out of the suitcase. I'd, I'd spent about 10 years saying I was going to be a stand-up from about the age of 16 to my first gig of, I was about, probably about 25, 26. So I'd spent 10 years building up to this and I was so nervous that I I got drunk for two or three days because I was so scared of doing it. I'll tell you what did happen as well, which is a true story, is my mate came round in the afternoon and I, I was going to show him like a little rehearsal in the afternoon what I was going to do. So he came round and uh, as a joke, I said, right, st stay there and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do tonight. I went into the bathroom and as a joke, I came out in a really skimpy tight pair of underpants and a mask of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I played some music and I danced around for five minutes and then when the music stopped I took the mask off going well what do you think and he laughed his head off and he said it's absolutely brilliant and I said oh I'm only joking I'm not really doing that he says what are you going to do then so I showed him and he went no 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 do the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing so I was going to do that I, he convinced me that to do that so I was that was going to be my first gig and then uh, luckily another mate came around and my mate said just watch watch this you're going to laugh your head off so my mate watched and I did the dancing round and when I pulled the mask off he went, it's awful, what's that? It's not an act. I went, well that's what I said, he said do it. He said, what were you going to do? So I showed him what I was going to do and he went, do the jokes, much better. The best heckle I've, I've heard, it wasn't to me, but I heard a comedian say, um, come up on stage and, and he was a big lad and he said, can you see me at the back? Which the joke is, of course you can, I'm a big lad, you know. He said, can you see me at the back? And someone at the front said, if they can't, I'm swapping. <laughs> Stand-up comedians aren't necessarily a special breed. I thought it was a special, unique type of person that became a stand-up comedian, and I thought I wasn't that type. And so I found it very hard to get into it. It took me 10 years to do my first gig. From saying I'm going to do it to doing it, it was 10 years. And had I known that they're not particularly unique or special or anything, then I would have done it earlier. In the initial stages, just if you really, if you want to do it for a laugh, do it. Just book in one and see, if, see what it feels like. But if you seriously want to become a comedian, I would book in at least 20, 30 gigs and then make the decision after 30 if you want to carry on. Because if you make the decision after the first few, you might just go, oh, I hate this, I'm rubbish, never doing it again. I'm afraid to say you're probably going to be a bit rubbish for the first few, possibly even the first 20 or 30. But so good luck, yeah? I'm not exactly what you call Mr Motivator, am I? <laughs> We're looking for the comedy star of the future. If you think that's you, go to bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 2 forward slash comedy.